Today, we're going to talk about tax planning, how to potentially keep more of your hard-earned money with you and in your pocket versus going to the IRS and taxes. We're going to talk about what tax planning is, why it's important, the difference between tax planning and tax preparation, and then stick around to the end because we've got three strategies for savers and investors to help potentially reduce your long-term tax burden. I'm Scott with Siren's Financial Group, where we help people with their key questions. Are you on track for retirement? What can you do to help to improve your financial picture? And then how can we help reduce your long-term tax burden? So when it comes to tax planning, I feel a lot of people can sometimes become very complacent, right? Like taxes just become this part of life. They're taking taxes out of your paycheck. If you're in retirement, you've got to withhold taxes from your retirement withdrawals. Well, instead of being complacent, today we want to be talking, today we're going to talk about being proactive. Let me just give you a quick example. Let's just say you pay a 12% tax rate on $10,000 of income versus a 22% tax rate on $10,000 of income. Well, that 12%, if you're at that 12% tax rate, that's $1,200. Where 22% tax rate, that's $2,200. Folks, that's a big difference. That's real savings that stays in your pocket. So why is tax planning becoming so important in your overall picture? Well, I think one thing that you need to look at is the overall debt of the United States. Now, this is the from the usdebtclock.org, you can go and see real-time values of how much debt um, the U.S. is facing. As of the uh, snapshot of this picture, it was $28 trillion in debt. Another thing that you have to take in mind is that we've just gone through um, the approval of three stimulus packages. That's over six-plus trillion dollars in government stimulus spending. So, Congress can change the tax laws, meaning change those tax rates at any point in time. And you have to ask yourself, do you think that taxes will stay the same, go down, or go up in the future? And if taxes go up, well, that's more money that's taken from your paycheck, more money that's taken from your retirement withdrawals, more money that's taken from your profits, your interest, your dividends. That's why tax planning is so important. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a second. I've got a great tax preparer. I work with a CPA. I work with an enrolled agent. And let me tell you, there are a lot of great uh, tax preparers that are out there. But here's the big difference. Working with the tax preparers, and again, there's a lot of great ones out there. Um, while you might be expecting them to do tax planning, the what's happening is kind of similar to this picture, right? You're moving forward, but what they're actually helping you do is look in the rear view mirror. What tax preparing is, is it is actually recording history. It's saying, hey, here's what took place last year, and now here's what you owe the IRS in taxes. What you really need to be thinking about is ripping off that rear view mirror. So while we might expect them to look at the future, it's really not their area of expertise. And the reason I say that is because they don't have access to your entire net worth, to all of your portfolios, to your entire situation. And so they wouldn't be able to really properly guide you regarding the future. That's what tax planning is. It's ripping off that rear view mirror and focusing on the future. There's actually a really good definition here by Investopedia. Tax planning is the analysis of a financial situation or plan to ensure that all elements together allow you to pay the lowest tax possible. A plan that minimizes how much you pay in taxes is referred to as tax efficient. Tax planning should be an essential part of an individual investor's financial plan. That sounds pretty good, right? Well, let's just make this a little bit more simple. What is tax planning? It's understanding your entire picture with a focus on today and the future, not the past. When we're talking about all those elements, it's where do your where does your money and where does all of your assets sit today? What kind of tax buckets do they sit in? We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. What do your current income streams look like? But also, what do your future income streams look like? And what is your potential 
retirement income stream look like? Social security, rental income, et cetera. What kind of debts do you have? What kind of charitable contributions do you make? Where are you saving to? And then if you're married, what could happen if one spouse were to pass away? It's using all of this information, all of these elements to help create a plan from this day forward. Again, not the past, but to help create a plan from this day forward to reduce your long-term tax burden. Now, I hope you're enjoying this video so far. And if so, and you'd like to see additional videos just like this to help you build wealth and reduce your long-term tax picture, subscribe to our YouTube channel or connect with us on Facebook. That way you'll get notified as we continue to come out with additional videos just like this to help you in your financial future. All right, let's dive in to the three strategies. Now, first, in understanding the three strategies, I think it's really important that you understand which types of tax buckets does your money sit in. And there's three buckets. The first bucket is the taxable bucket. Now, examples that would go into this bucket would be like your brokerage account, your checking, your savings, CDs. You see, this bucket is a bucket that gets taxed each and every year on your gains, your interest, your dividends. Again, getting taxed each and every year. Next bucket, your tax deferred bucket. Examples that, that would fit in there would be like your IRA, 401k, 403bs, 457 plans. You see, when you put money into this bucket, you actually got a tax deduction in the year that you put the money in. So you haven't been taxed on any of the money that you put in. The money grows tax deferred. So you haven't paid any tax on any of the gains. This bucket here, you have to pay income tax on all of the money that you take out. The last bucket, that's the tax-free bucket. Some examples that would fit into there would be like a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA. Yes, when you put money in, you pay tax on that money that you put in. But the money then that's in the bucket plus all of the growth is all growing tax-free and can be all withdrawn tax-free as well. So now that we understand the three tax buckets that our money sits in, let's talk about three strategies for savers and investors to help potentially reduce your long-term tax burden. Okay, strategy number one, are you saving into the right tax bucket? You see, I find that there's this misconception out there that you should be saving all of your money into that tax deferred bucket, IRAs, 401ks. But you see, based on how much you might save in there, if you save a considerable amount, that's a bucket where currently at age 72, the uh, government makes you take those required minimum distributions. So based on how much you save in there, you might have some pretty large requirement required minimum distributions in your future. And that could push your future taxable income higher than where you're at today. So the first strategy that you really want to think about is, again, not getting complacent with what we hear. It's really looking at your situation and going, okay, am I putting my money into the right buckets? You want to be diversifying the locations that you're putting your money into, again, all based on but based on your situation, long-term planning, looking at all of the elements. Number two, are you using the right types of investments in the right tax buckets or are you causing yourself unnecessary tax? So for instance, the taxable bucket, that bucket where I said it gets taxed each and every year, are you using funds that are tax efficient or are you using funds that are causing unnecessary tax to your overall um, taxable income each and every year. This is a strategy you really want to take a look at in that bucket as well as others to make sure you're using the right funds that are tax efficient, help reducing that, I'll say more of your current tax burden. And then number three, this long-term thought process, long-term approach, have you looked at repositioning money between the tax buckets, right? So this is thinking about paying tax today at a known rate and potentially shifting money over into the tax-free bucket. This One example of this is a Roth conversion. Does this make sense for you? Again, it depends on all of those elements that I listed earlier. 
doing a forecast or a picture of what does your long-term tax burden uh, look like? What are your what is your long-term uh, income look like? And then making that decision: Does it make sense to pay tax at that known rate today? Again, to get it in the tax-free bucket for tax-free growth and tax-free withdrawals in the future. So those are the three strategies for savers and investors. I hope you can leave here. I want to give you two actions to leave here with. One is, first off, understanding where does your money sit today? And then the second action, start working through those three strategies that I just listed to help reduce your long-term tax burden. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, if so, and you'd like to see additional videos just like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, connect with us on Facebook. That way you'll get notified as, we want to, as we're going to continue to come out with additional videos to help you build wealth, reduce your long-term tax picture, and improve your overall financial future. Thanks, and have a great day.